All right. This Hangout is now live on air. Okay. It says so. All right. What is this, Lady Ada? Uh, this is our live show and tell that we're having on Google Plus every single week. And this is where all the coolest makers and hackers and hobbyists of all stripes come and show off their cool projects and their 3D printers and their LEDs and their cats. So let's get started. We're going to go through people <laughs> in order that we see them on our little thingy. Uh, yeah. It's going to be Tony, Noah, Juan Pedro, Phil, Lewis, and Andre, and then whoever else comes in. So just yeah. take a couple of minutes to show off your project and meet your mic if you are not showing your project. Okay. Okay. Let's start off with Tony D. Tony, what you got cooking this week? Hey, yeah, so I've been playing with the AHRS system, which is the Attitude and Heading Reference System. And it's basically a way to take uh, accelerometer and magnetometer data and spit out orientation, because the raw data you get isn't really directly mapped to here's an angle that you're uh, facing. So, you know, these are little boards like the Tendoff board here, but I'm also, I actually ported over the AHRS code to work with the new LSM uh, 9DSO sensor. And so I'll show you real quickly an example. And of course, the cat is right there, so okay. got to be by the side. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, a processing sketch. And you see, so I've got a sensor here. This is the LSM 9DSO. Uh, and it's got the accelerometer, magnetometer, gyro, you know, pretty much all in one, just a single chip. Uh, through I squared C, or you could even use SPI to uh, communicate. And so you can see this wa uh, rabbit kind of in the background there. This is the processing sketch that's running. So there was already a really nice tutorial on this AHRS system, and I've just made a few tweaks and changes. Uh, so in the sketch here, uh, the rabbit, it's a little bit easier to configure it and use your um, USB port. But as I turn the board here, so you can kind of see as I rotate this, the rabbit rotates around, or if I flip it upside down, then the rabbit flips upside down. And so what's happening is, uh, and there's an Arduino Uno here that's uh, connected to the uh, sensor. So as the Arduino reads the data and calls some of the AHRS library functions to turn the raw accelerometer and magnetometer data into orientation, it's then sending that over to the processing sketch, which it's updating in real time to rotate the rabbit around. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of a neat way. And uh, Right now it's a real simple AHRS algorithm. You can get really crazy and advanced. Um, you know, there's all these common common filters and uh, you know, real advanced logic you can do, basically like machine learning in some cases. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some more. Uh, oops! Oh, of course the thing just went to sleep. So hopefully we'll get some uh, better algorithms and things in the future here. Uh, but this is just kind of a good start to uh, do a, a real simple example of using an AHRS system. Yeah, it's Very neat well. to see um, both the cat in a box and also yep. um, <laughs> these high tech sensors. Uh, you know, be, being so low cost and easy to use that you can integrate them to like any robot or project. This used to be like literally space grade technology yeah. even oh, yeah, like yeah. ten years ago, and now it's like every single cell phone and game controller has one. Exactly. Yeah. When I grew up, we never knew our orientation of rabbits, so I'm glad that's been solved. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up, no, I'm Pedro. Hello. How are you guys doing? What you got? Hey guys. Happy hey guys. Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Getting ready for another awesome jam-packed 3D Thursday. This yeah. <laughs> this week we took apart our Lawsbot, fixed a melted resistor inside the heat block, animated some cute little faces on oscilloscopes. Oh no! And <laughs> found some delay and some old prints to make DIY filament. But this week we're releasing oh what a great segue from Tony's our DIY video goggle design. Wow. So. This is really cool for anyone who wants to kind of make their own wearable display, or maybe if you're a camera operator or a DP. Yeah. It's a pretty good uh, alternative to, I guess, uh, an HD monitor with a hood on it. Yeah, so a lot of the designs that are out there to download right now are just boxy. You know, they're not editable. They're, you know, just one material. So we thought we could do a little bit better, make uh, curves that you can edit, you know, just your face, your cheeks, your nose. And yeah. it's dual printed, so we got the PLA framing and a uh, NinjaFlex uh, oh, so it's, a, it's a stiff body, but then the part that actually touches your face is soft. Yeah, I think exactly. what's really cool about this is that you don't need the dual extruder to print something like this. You can actually just sort of print it with one and just sort and of swap stop, out. And then, yeah, and, and it, it bonds together, or do you have to glue it? No, oh. it bonds together. So the secret, if you watch tomorrow's show... Okay, I'll watch the show. Uh, yeah, how to bond it together. the secret. Yeah. I've watched the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, you can get some spherical lenses and turn this into a total head tracking system, play some immersive VR games. 
edit all of the diopter settings. We have little rails on the side that can bring it closer, farther away from your eye. So it's a great little design that anybody can build up top of, hold yourself a virtual Game Boy or something else that we haven't thought of. Yeah, so be sure to check out the YouTube uh, video that's going to come out tomorrow. And it's a, it's a two-part project, right? So you're starting with just the 3D print, and then you're going to adapt it to make, like, something else? Or because you said, like, tune in next week. Exactly, exactly yeah. yes. Okay. So we're going to break everything up into different parts so we can get more episodes out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All right, well, um, two epic. things. Can I come live with you? <laughs> Sorry, that's a little awkward. Um, but then the second thing is, um, I'll call you later. Um, but uh, you have so many cool stuff going on. Um, but tomorrow uh, is world premiere of 3D Hangouts on Thursdays. So for everyone who likes show and tell, imagine doing one kind of like it on Thursdays with Noah and Pedro and Matt. So you'll see that tomorrow. So it's a big, big deal. The first live 3D printing show, um, it'll be the most popular one because it's the only one right away. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have Matt join us. He's going to talk about the 3D printing shootout that happened at Make over the weekend. So we got a really lot of cool stuff to cover. Yeah. All right, you guys are like the 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 biggest names in 3D printing. Yeah. Cool. 3D print printer Palooza. 3D printer Palooza. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the update, and we'll show your video, and then of course everybody who's watching tune yeah. in tomorrow. Tomorrow. To watch on YouTube. Okay. The 3D with Noah, Pedro, and Matt. Okay. And I'm going to hop into plane. I'll see you later tonight. Okay. <laughs> Next up. All right, Phil. All right, Phil B. You've been working on an amazing project. I know. Hello there. I know about this. What? Hi, yeah, I don't know if you can see this or if it's... Oh, I'm getting a tan <laughs> from it. Um, this is, it basically, it's all the NeoPixels. Um, <laughs> no, this is... This is um, the idea is like those, you know, the hippie uh, beaded curtains. Yeah. Um, made from NeoPixels. So there's uh, 1440... Almost 1,500 NeoPixels um, hanging from this thing behind me. And then it's all controlled um, using the uh, Fade Candy LED drivers, three of those, yeah. uh, Raspberry Pi. And the video is actually coming off the laptop uh, right here that I'm using. So it streams wirelessly. Um, oh, wow. So it's streaming the, the Stargate from uh, 2001 at the moment. Um, Man. You know, the thumbnail looks terrible. It looks all washed out, so I don't know it's if you can so see it. It's so bright. Yeah, it's annoying. You have to, like, manually adjust. It's like you have to have a camera manual adjustment. You have to, like, yeah. you can it's incredibly bright. You have to speed away from it at the speed of light or something. To... <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> so this is your, this is your I, epic project. It is, it is actually showing, uh, you know, live, live uh, well, uh, recorded video yeah. uh, off, the, off the hard drive. All right. This okay. Is cool. And so the world will be able to see this probably in the next week or so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, writing up the guide right now. There's a page or two still to write. Okay. Um, it's a lot, lot harder to describe than I thought, but um, I think it's a good idea because a lot of people have had these, you know, recurring questions. You know, why can't I just use a bunch of power bricks? And yeah. yeah, yeah. Why can't I use 20 gauge wire? Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's a different, it's a whole new ball of wax when you're doing, you know, something large scale like this. So I hope it'll answer some of those types of questions that people okay. have. Well, All this right. is cool and huge. Yeah, you can kind of see the, yeah, yeah, yeah. some of the, when it's not as bright, you can see it better. <laughs> yeah. Like, ow, All my right. eyeballs. Yeah, I think I should. All right, well, thank you so much, Phil. Congratulations yeah. on not being blinded by your own projects. Well, <laughs> not yet. Next up. All right, Lewis. Hello, Lewis. How you doing? Hi, so I've been working with the Electronic Imp, which is really cool. It's basically like an SD card, but and they're using a SD card connector because it's a lot easier to use a connector that's already existing. So here I've got on a breadboard my Electric Imp on an April breakout board on a breadboard. And then I've got my power switch tail connected to that lamp. Okay. And I've got my power bench power supply there. So um, I'm going to show you on my laptop. OK. So I made a small HTML page that I'm hosting on my web server. And so what you can do is you hit on, and then you're going to put your name. So I'll put Lewis, and I'm going to show the lamp. And then when I hit update, it'll turn the lamp on. But then the other cool thing is, is 
if you can kind of see it on the bottom, it says who turned on the lamp. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to, this is going to be crazy, but I'm going to let anyone who's watching the show and tell for like the next hour <laughs> control the lamp. Okay. So here it is. It's, oh, whoops. It's you. It's you. Yeah, no. <laughs> they turned off your lamp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need to go to bit.ly forward slash electric imp, and then you're going to get the web page. Okay. Hey, you're we're we're get... going there right now. We're going to turn off your lamp. Okay, sounds good. Or turn it back on. Okay. Okay. Well, it's, it's still on, so you're going to need to turn it off. Oh, Bam. yeah. It's... Oh, yeah, it worked. Yeah. Lady Ada just turned off your lamp. <laughs> nice. All right, excellent work there. It's, and what's nice is this, this wasn't like a crazy hard project either, right? The electric. Yeah. There's a lot of the like complicated interactive stuff. Yeah, and I'm really liking the electric imp because, like, to connect it to Wi-Fi, all I had to do is just hold up my phone and hold it to the phone. Yeah. And it would, and it just my phone blinked really rapidly, and it connected it to Wi-Fi. Nice. All right. Yeah. Well, you get an S scene on the show and tell sticker, and for the rest of the evening, you're basically gonna have a strobe lamp. So yeah. Okay. Can you go back to Phil Beef because it looks like his his he got yeah you oh you put a, a oh, look at that. high tech uh, diffuser. Otherwise, yeah, it was like it a hung some fabric, uh, dark fabric. fabric in front of it, and that yeah. that kind of cleared it up. Yeah, that's actually yeah. A, a a two inch plate steel. Yeah. <laughs> that's how thick it is. It's a, it's a chunk yeah. of iron sheet. That's how bright. Okay. Okay. All right, we're gonna keep moving along here. Thank you, Phil and Lewis. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Next up, Nicholas. Oh, sorry, uh, Andre. Oh, was it Andre? Sorry, sorry Nicholas. Sorry. Hang tight. Hang, hang tight. tight. Andre. Andre. Sorry, Hello, you Andre. First. Hello. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I didn't mute my microphone, and I thought I did. So. It's all good. It's okay. You were very quiet. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I saw this one video that inspired me to build an airsoft turret, and this is the magazine. Holds 2,500 rounds. So I'll show off the turret in its current working state. Okay. Okay. I just gotta make sure I can see it. <laughs> Me from where you're at. It's like so powerful. It's gonna launch yeah. into New York. I, I don't know. I'm on a laptop, so like. Yeah, I, I it. it's okay. Yeah. yeah, so I, the, uh, I have a window motor uh, below the turret. Which just drives it. Um, I ha you then have two switches that tells it to reverse direction, um, and then I have a relay which actually connects the battery to the trigger, which I actually forgot to zip tie down. Sad face. Okay, but um, anyway, I have a sonar sensor duct taped to the front, which uh, will tell the distance and if it's within, say, a hundred centimeters. I'm actually having a little bit of distance problem out here. Um, it will fire. So I gotta find something to prop up my laptop, or I can just put it down. All right. All right, fire away. For science. For science, and hopefully not pain. Sometimes science hurts. <laughs> uh, power switch. Just gotta rotate it. How much can you see? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, we can see this this airsoft turret and a really nice grill. Yeah, thank you. Um, I get the battery. I kind of feel bad for any squirrels that are hanging out in your yard. And if the trigger was duct taped down, it would be firing. Except the battery is like really crappy low right now. Okay. Looks epic though. Mm -hmm. Looks epic. Yeah, I, I should have prepared more. I got off school at like five. <laughs> Race yeah. home to do the show and tell. It's cool. You know, you can always come back next week if you want to demo you or your favorite person getting shot by this airsoft rifle. <laughs> People will come back for this. Yeah, um, hopefully I should have it working by Sunday, and then I'll record something at uh, the Airsoft place. Okay. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Andre. Okay, you still get an S-scene on Show & Tell sticker, but yeah. do come back 
next week and or send us a video of this in action. We'll post it up on the blog. I want to see this because this looks, All right. looks I'll awesome. I'll send you guys a video. And how, cool. how many rounds is it? Two, 200 rounds? 2,500. Jeez. 2,500. Okay. All I was right. off by order of All magnitude. All right, uh, next up, Nicholas. Okay. Hello, Nicholas. How's it going? Hey, it's Nicholas Oscilloscope. Hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, this, this is... Uh, I actually... This is not much of a project. It's not going to really make a thing. Uh, but it's sort of data gathering. What you've got here, uh, the blue trace is uh, GPS pulse per second from the uh, Adafruit Ultimate GPS module. Uh, and it's also the trigger point for the scope. The uh, yellow line is our 60 hertz uh, AC current. Um, it's been obviously downshifted by a transformer down to 9 volts for RMS uh, before you plug it into the transformer. You, you know, Don't go sticking oscilloscope or voltmeter probes into your electric outlet, people. It's not a good idea. Uh, but that, uh, the... Yep. Sorry, what, you said you, you, you cut out. Your microphone cut out, Nicholas. And now you're just an oscilloscope. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Do you, do you want to do maker charades? I can do maker charades. Yeah, your mic, cut out, your mic cut out, Nicholas. What, what we'll do is we'll go to the next person, and if we hear you, we'll go back to you. It looks like you had a, maybe some Wi-Fi or Internet problems going on there. He, st I, he stuck his hand into the socket, just like he said not to do that. I think that's what it was? No, I don't know. Okay. It's a nice, it's a nice All right. steady well, signal, though. If you can hear us, Nicholas, maybe come back in a bit because okay. your audio cut out. Now okay. You're, now you're walking around. All right. Next we'll, up. We'll come back to you. We're going to go to Logan. Logan, and then... Trixie Bella. Trixie Bella. And then Bow Bow. And then Bow Bow. Okay, Logan. Hello. Hey, How's it Logan going? Hey, Logan friends. Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Yeah. Hey. Special project. So I'm Logan. I'm Ben. And I'm Tim. Hey. We built an arcade machine. It's a little bit bigger than the Cupcade, though. Okay. Just a bit. Anything is. <laughs> it's a box. It's a box of magical arcades. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Sweet. One second. We, um... Are we still here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it is Raspberry Pi powered. Uh, we're not on the screen. What? Stuff's happening. You guys still there? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a Raspberry Pi powered arcade. Okay, it's a Raspberry Pi powered arcade machine, and um, all the controls are run by a Teensy uh, 2. Okay, cool. So okay, cool. we take our front panel off, we have our Teensy in there wired up to all of our buttons and our joystick, which is basically just four micro switches. And you have a keyboard. Um, if you come around, come around the side, we have the Ethernet jack and the power cord in the side there. And in the actual back of the machine, which opens, we have our Pi and our power in and uh, an electrical box with a switch. Okay. Which turns everything on and off. And an old RCA TV that we got for free. That's the <laughs> best part. I'm like, I'm like, that looks like a CRT. So, or how did you uh, get the round? What's, uh, what's your favorite game? Hmm? Favorite game. I personally like playing Dig Dug, and he likes, he likes Pac-Man. Logan. Uh, so let's actually, Logan's going to play it. So move. Uh, I'll grab this. Move it around. Plug in that computer too. So plug in my computer. Huh? Plug in my computer. Great summary. We're doing musical power chords in computers. <laughs> we have too many things. All right. Well, let's hope that works. All right. So we actually wired our start buttons up here. So that they insert a coin and do run the start command. So they insert coin and then they hit start oh. so that you don't have to insert a coin. And we didn't machine. mention, but it's running the PyMame emulator for all the arc uh, arcade machines. So uh, I don't even hear that. It's a little bit quiet right now. Yeah, yeah. I can hear that. That's just Pac-Man. You have a story. I have one life. <laughs> so all right, this is great. Good job, guys. Okay. You guys need a sticker on the side the, of that. The only thing that this our kid is missing is as seen on the show and tell sticker. So congratulations, Great. Logan and team. Good work. Yeah, this is awesome. Nice work. I love the classic CRT. That's a nice yeah. touch. A nice touch. Okay. It has a bunch of games on it. So if we exit out, there's a whole menu of games. Very cool. Yeah. Oh. We have a GitHub repository where we have our team to code. Oh, look at that. Okay. Chicken. We'll put that uh, in the comments or something. And yeah, yeah. That would be great. Okay, and then send a link to that, too, when you um, 
email supportedatafruit.com for your SE you know, on the show and tell sticker. Yes. Okay, oh, next, next up. up. Trixabella. Trixabella, welcome back. Hey. So can you all hear me good? Yeah, yeah, you're here to play some music. Yeah. So I actually got my little thing. Uh, doesn't squeak like that. Um, got it fixed up a little bit. It's running off one of the tiny NeoPixels at the moment here on the side with all the tape. Um, here soon I'll be adding Velcro to add the entire strip on. Uh, it's a slow process to sew it all into the uh, tubing yeah. uh, for it. Uh, and as you can see, it actually reacts. Yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, uh, what I've done for this is uh, it's based off the um, Spectrum Shield from SparkFun, and it's running off a uh, Uno at the moment. Just has easy uh, to work with, and it uses about four pins total, so it's extremely easy. Um, I'm slowly converting it over uh, to the uh, not the Gemma, the um, the other one. Flora? <laughs> Another Flora, the, um, the similar to one to Gemma. Trinket? Trinket? Yeah, Trinket, thank okay. you. Yeah. Um, slowly can bring it over to that one. Um, it's like a little mess right now. If I can get this up. This is what I'm working with. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's a huge mess, but slowly getting it done. So. All right, yeah. this is cool. All right. I can't Excellent wait project. to have like, all the LEDs on this file. I'm sure We're going to try to get to the last two folks. Um, can you just hang out to the end, and maybe at the end you can play us out a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. All right so all right. Trick, trick Spell and the Violin Band. Will violin be there. and the E-Violin. Okay, violin. so we're going to go to uh, Bow Bow, and then we'll check back in with Nicholas. Looks like he made it back, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, all right, Bow Bow. Bow. Hey. How's it going? Hey. Oh. Oh, unmute your mic. Let's see. Turn on your mic. Or select your mic. Yeah, you're. We can see you, but you're you can't in silent hear you. mode. You may want to hit the little microphone button at the upper. The upper upper. Me? Hello. Nick. Or somebody else. No, no Bow Bow. Um, she's. Bow Bow's she's working on her mic. Yeah. Or we'll do maker charades. Yeah, you might have. <laughs> okay. Pull up your project. Is it a physical project? It's not a physical no. project. It's a data visualization project. It's a typing project. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe come back next week, and um, we'll call on you first so you have plenty of time to check your mic. It's cool. It's all right. You have a great no book, problem. Kate. It's all those like, awesome books and graphic novels you got. Okay. okay. Nicholas, you're back, and your mic does right. work. So wrap up your project, okay. and we're going to go. Sorry about that. So uh, my lap, my, I guess my phone has trouble with the Wi-Fi out here in the garage. So the concept is that that um, oscilloscope is showing it's triggered on uh, GPS pulse per second, and the yellow is the a uh, AC uh, line frequency. Mm -hmm. So the question is how how good long term is the uh, the st stability and accuracy of the 60 hertz line frequency? And so I've been running an experiment to find that out, and I've got an instructable that I've uh, created that has that answer. Um, but if you if you look at that, I don't know if it, is it framed really well. You can kind of see it drifting in real time. It drifts right now. It's drifting a little bit to the left. Uh, earlier, it was drifting a little bit to the right. Um, it just sort of decides to go back and forth. Huh. So what I've got here is uh, this breadboard has the Adafruit uh, GPS uh, breakout module. Uh, it also has an Atmega 328 chip, you know, Arduino style, and the line frequency is going into a comparator. Uh, so that you get 60, uh, 60 hertz square wave. And I'm just counting the rising edges of the 60 hertz square wave versus pulse per second from GPS. And every once in a while, you'll get a 59 or a 61 instead of a 60. I'm outputting those on a serial port. There's a Raspberry Pi watching that. And I'm uh, collecting the, the, the data. Hmm. So this graph, this is actually from uh, the data from, uh, from Monday. And it shows what I call the accumulated cycle debt. So every time it's, um, you know, so the position on that is how many cycles uh, we're owed uh, by the electric company to keep our clocks accurate. So this is midnight to midnight Monday. We started out a little bit on the, uh, the plus side. So they, they owed us a few, like 50 cycles from Sunday night. But we wound up at being like negative 400 at the end of the day. So 
<clears throat> the clocks were, were that fast. So, so far the data is telling me that uh, long term they are correcting the, uh, the frequency pretty well, but in the short term you can get a plus or minus like five seconds or so if you're counting the 60 hertz uh, huh. uh, cycles. We well, usually just see if it's the if it's the cycle from the um, wall that's off or the pulse per second from the GPS that's off. Well, I'm sort of assuming that the pulse per second from the GPS is is accurate because uh, the fix LED is on, and um, if you if you knock the the GPS off the air or if you surround it with tin foil or something, then the pulse per second just cuts out when it loses the fix. Yeah, but that happens just because it, because it loses the fix. Like the pulse per second is generated on the the GPS inside using a real time clock, so it, it will drift and it corrects when it gets data from the satellite. Yeah, but if you if it goes into the lost fix mode, then I think the pulse per second cuts out. At least that's what I observed that's once. What firm, yeah, that's what the firmware does. That's, yeah, that's so, on purpose so that you don't think that you are getting valid data when there's no fix. Yeah, so I'm assuming that, and I and I do catch like if the pulse per second goes away, then I get that logged as well. But that hasn't happened. And out here in the garage, the, the construction of the house is good enough that I, I get a pretty good signal on that. Thing. What you need is an atomic clock. So you should, uh, <laughs> you should go buy an atomic clock. And, well, so uh, GPS, is, GPS yeah. for bang for buck is really, really the experimenter's dream. Like, you get 10 nanoseconds of accuracy for $30. That's, yeah. that's hard to do. That is good. Even with a little bit of drift. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to okay. wrap up. Thank okay. you, everybody. And you can yeah. uh, email support and get a sticker to put on your oscilloscope. All right, thank you. And we're going to have Trixbell play us out, Trixbell play us out. The official Song show and tell. Show and tell. Alright, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Don Pedro. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Emma. Wow. Thank you, Andre. And thank you, Trick Bell. We'll see everybody here on Ask an Engineer just in a few moments, and we'll see you next week on Show and Tell, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, tomorrow, 3 p.m., 3D Hangouts, a new 3D printing show from Adafruit. It's on Thursday, but we're not allowed, I'm not allowed to call it 3D Thursday, even though it is on Thursday. It's hang, 3D Hangouts. It's 3D Hangouts at 3 p.m. to be at 3 p.m. You never know. There could be something to happen. They could get rid of Thursdays, so we've got to think ahead. I know. It's true. All right. Okay. Bye, guys.